talking about feedback mechanisms, methane in uh, the permafrost. This worries me a lot. Am I right to be worried or because it's I saw this story in the New York Times about uh, the permafrost in Russia and yeah. just in, a, in like Siberia, just releasing just an amazing amount of methane. You know, the methane feedback. So there is a lot of misinformation uh, and, and, and sort of doomists. I've talked about this before with you. Uh, the people who are convinced it's too late to do anything about climate change because we're already seeing uh, irreversible runaway warming. That's just not true. And that there's so much methane coming out of the Arctic that 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 we can't stop it and that we're, you know, we're, we are now doomed that uh, we will be extinct in a matter of years. I mean, these are some of the claims that you see out there in sort of what I call the doomosphere the sort of doomist uh, outer reaches uh, of the blogosphere and social media. Mm -hmm. And there's some bad actors actually who are stoking uh, those fires uh, because if you can lead people down this path of hopelessness um, and despair, then you, know, you end up putting them on the sidelines when we need them to be on the front lines demanding action. And so we've got to get the science right here. We've got to correct the myths regardless of what side they come from. And in this case, there are these doomist myths about methane that just have no basis in fact. It is true that if we warm the planet enough, if we fail to take any meaningful action and we warm the planet, you know, seven, eight degrees Fahrenheit uh, by the end of the century, then the paleoclimate record, then the evidence suggests that some of these feedbacks really could start to kick in and we could slide into a hothouse earth, you know, a fundamentally uh, different climate than, than the one that we live in, much hotter, much more formidable when it comes to, you know, uh, the viability of our civilization. But that is in a scenario of almost total inaction. If we keep warming below one and a half Celsius for sure, which is the target right now of these proceedings in Glasgow, but under two degrees or even three, which is almost a worst case scenario now, there's enough progress being made that we now think that even if there isn't much additional climate progress, just the fact that renewable energy is increasing exponentially and we are moving away from fossil fuels, you know, there's, there's a great likelihood that we keep warming below three degrees Celsius. Even in that scenario, we don't get runaway methane spikes. And we know this because the Arctic was warmer uh, 125,000 years ago. Now, the planet probably wasn't warmer. The Arctic was warm because there was more sunlight at high latitudes. It has to do with changes in Earth's orbital geometry, the, the same changes that govern the ice ages. But the Arctic in the summer was probably a few degrees hotter than it is now. And there's no evidence at all that there was a massive release of methane then. So we sort of know that if we keep warming within a few degrees, we're unlikely to see these sort of runaway methane scenarios. If we, if we exceed that range, then we do start to get into some of these paleoclimate analogs going back 50, 60 million years ago where there were episodes like that. And so it's all up to us in the end, whether or not, you know, we slide into a, a hothouse earth. Um, is entirely dependent on whether we, you know, act or, or or not with regard to the climate crisis.